Salam alaikum. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, really a great pleasure to have the opportunity to speak to you this morning about research collaborations between my university, the University of Essex, and the King Abdulaziz University in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. I've chosen as my title Embedded Research Collaborations because in addition to talking about some exciting and successful research connections, I want to highlight the importance of situating such collaborations within a broader academic context. I firmly believe that taking such a context into account has played a really important part in ensuring the overall success of the research projects that I'm going to talk about. The first aspect of the context is the recognition that today it is no longer possible for any institution, however large or small, however weak or strong, and however poorly or well resourced, to go it alone. Internationalisation is here to stay. Cooperation and collaboration on an international scale are vital for the success of all higher education institutions and sectors, wherever they are located. The drivers that push us towards such collaborations are based around the simple fact that most really interesting questions in most research areas are global challenges that require global solutions. The two case studies I will outline shortly cover two such areas. One is in plant biology, the other in computer science and artificial intelligence. It is no longer possible in many areas to pursue research questions that have an international dimension within the confines of one's own office, what I would call just internationally informed research. Such research nowadays has to be internationally engaged. It is likely to cross disciplinary boundaries and to require what has been called a transdisciplinary approach, one that takes account of different disciplinary methodologies, cultural differences and modes of engagement. Fundamental, however, to all these considerations is the fact that none of us has infinite capacity. We don't have full coverage of every subject. We don't have infinite resource. We don't have every facility and we don't have all the expertise that we need to solve serious research problems. In particular, there are issues concerning the location and access to key resources, the availability of financial resources necessary to a lesser or greater extent to facilitate the research, and there are matters concerning the profile, the visibility and position of our separate institutions, our regions, our nations, within an international context of strongly developing higher education sectors. My agenda for the remainder of the talk, and indeed for pursuing international research collaborations, is based on aligning the research projects themselves with appropriate capacity building activities so that all partners can support and sustain the research. That alignment may involve connecting the research to new educational projects, such as new degree schemes, it may involve setting up a framework in which researchers and research students can be sufficiently mobile to engage in collaborative activities. It may involve the development of complementary or new facilities. It may involve sharing and developing new expertise among participants. And it may involve the development of new protocols for enabling effective and efficient research activity across international boundaries. The importance of adding extra activities and dimensions to research collaborations is something that has become very clear to me over the last few years as a result of various experiences that I have had personally in working in the region. And those experiences working with ministries, accrediting agencies and consultancy firms in many countries have led me to the conclusion that no single aspect of academic life, whether it be research, curriculum development, training, planning or forms of capacity building, can be, or I suppose I should say, should be treated 
separately. Much is to be gained by taking a holistic approach and designing a package of interactions that are mutually beneficial, mutually supportive and complementary. Let me first, however, describe the two research projects we're engaged in and then I'll explain how such an extended package of interactions has benefited both parties. Our two universities are very different, obviously in terms of where they're located, but also in size and coverage. The King Abdulaziz University is an extremely large institution, having well over 100,000 students, if one counts all students that fall under its supervision. It has 15 faculties covering all aspects of higher education comprehensively. Each faculty comprises many departments. The University of Essex is, on the other hand, much smaller, having around 12,000 students, mainly on its campus in Colchester. In fact, the town of Colchester is roughly the same size as the student population of the King Abdulaziz University. As it is not a comprehensive university, it has only three faculties and its coverage of science and engineering is restricted to strong departments in biology, psychology, computer science, electronic engineering, health sciences and mathematics. It boasts the UK's leading departments of sociology and political science, top five ranked departments in economics, accountancy and finance, linguistics and history, and top 10 ranked departments in art history and in philosophy. The first project I want to talk about brings together biologists from the two universities. The study concerns a rather unimpressive bush to be found in the deserts of South Asia and the Middle East. This bush, however, is a chemical defence specialist. Apart from a grasshopper, nothing will go near this plant, not even a camel. It seems to be able to kill other plants and it is highly resistant to predators and pathogens. It is also tolerant to many environmental conditions that would see other plants wither and die. For example, it is tolerant of a lack of water, extreme heat, extreme light and infertile soils. It has been known as a medical plant in the region for a very long time and it is understood to have many useful pharmacological properties. But how does it achieve these effects? This project raises many challenges. The plant only occurs in the wild and it is difficult to study using conventional techniques. The researchers at the two universities have come up with a methodology for studying this plant within its natural habitat. In addition, state-of-the-art techniques in gene sequencing and proton nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy have been employed to undertake a comprehensive study. The skills and experiences of scientists from the two universities were critical to understanding and undertaking the field work and then the follow-up work in the laboratories. It is now two years since the first work was undertaken in the field and the results are really exciting but there is still an enormous amount of work still to do. Currently, the two teams are putting together applications for further funding in order to take this work, this unique work in plant biology, to the next stage. The second project that I want to talk about is much larger and lies in the area of computer science and artificial intelligence. This work concerns so-called intelligent environments. Such environments might be offices, office buildings, houses, shops or hospitals. Indeed, any environment in which people work or live. 
It has become almost routine for such environments to contain at least a degree of automation, that is, some technology that could be controlled by users. But much more challenging and much, much more interesting are environments that exhibit a high degree of autonomy, that sense the behaviour, the needs and the requirements of users and adapt without human intervention to meet those requirements and needs. There are many, many applications. Clearly, environments that can optimise energy use, particularly if they can do that without having to be explicitly controlled, would be very valuable. But imagine also a hospital or a rehabilitation unit or sheltered accommodation. Here, an adaptive environment would be able to tell when occupants were in trouble or even when they exhibit even minor changes in their behaviour alerting medical or other authorities appropriately. Research in this area, to date, has concentrated only on single environments. However, there is much to be gained in many applications areas by combining geographically distinct environments in order to form larger intelligent spaces. One such application area is in education where students and teachers may be separated in both space and time. The Scale-Up project specifically addresses these issues of connected spaces and the benefit of having scientists in two different locations has been very important. These next few slides actually show a scientific laboratory at the University of Essex. It may look like a residential apartment but it is in fact a very sophisticated experimental laboratory. The panels that you can see on the wall in the picture are all removable and behind them are sensors and an, enor and an enormous amount of technology. The entire apartment is constructed within the main walls of the building allowing plenty of space to the sides, above and below in order to undertake the research work. In addition to a kitchen and a living room, there is a bedroom and also there is a bathroom and there is a study. The laboratory is shown here from the outside with a circle. It is only a small part of the main building. Imagine, however, if the entire building were an intelligent space or a set of interconnected spaces. Now this is the ambition of the scientists at the King Abdulaziz University to develop a building that both houses the research and is in itself the laboratory that the research studies. Such a facility would be a world-class laboratory and it would be unique. This is the ambition of the Scale-Up project. Other aspects of this work include cutting-edge approaches to distance education. Seen here is an immersive reality desk. Students who are separated by several thousand kilometres can nevertheless work together collaboratively, collaboratively and intimately and learn from one another. The immersive desk also makes use of what is called mixed reality, so that one student can be working with a piece of real physical equipment that is interacting with another piece of physical equipment but at a remote location. That remote equipment appears to our student as a piece of virtual reality. However, a piece of virtual reality that is combined with real physical objects and interacts with them. Look, for example, at the virtual cup and the physical saucer in the central photograph here. An interaction between reality and virtual reality. Now, I have said that it is important to connect research activities with all other relevant aspects of institutional life. In the case of these projects, we have, in addition to the research itself, 
developed and implemented a large number of additional activities that help to support and sustain the research. For example, we have developed new curricula, particularly at the postgraduate level, to create opportunities for new students to, ve to develop relevant skills and to move into the research areas we are concerned with. In this way, we hope to create a critical mass and a sustainable supply of relevant talent. We'll need them for many years. There are many PhD students involved in these projects. We engage in joint supervision and we have provided training and development work in order that such supervision can be effective and profitable. Working separately in our own institutions for the lifetime of the project would be very unfortunate and we have set up mobility programmes that allow both students and faculty members to work and move, learning from scientists on both sides. Faculty mobility also offers opportunity for contributing to the education of students on both sides. Finally, Advice and expertise has been provided in order that we can bring facilities that we lack on each side, if not to the standard that we enjoy separately, then at least to an appropriate level that supports the research activities. Within the Scale Up project, for example, we have established annual training events at Essex, which faculty members from King Abdulaziz University attend. In fact, we have had academics on these events who are not themselves involved in the research project itself. One programme concerned the development of PhD programmes, studies of models for the supervision, management and monitoring of student progress, and protocols specifically designed for co-supervision at a distance. The report that the faculty members from King Abdulaziz University produced was so thorough that we have now used it internally at Essex as part of our induction for new academic staff. The impact that this has had on the smooth supervisory arrangements for our own jointly supervised PhD students has been very positive indeed. A second programme concerned intensive academic training in focused research areas. This has led to a third programme that will take place in Jeddah towards the end of this year. That will see a number of short courses offered and the development of new research tools and facilities in Jeddah that we can link to through our existing facilities here in the UK. There is really no excuse these days for a breakdown of communication. However, geographically separated researchers can become. The technology that is now on offer provides an enormous opportunity to communicate and organise and we routinely use various tools for informal and formal communication, distance education, the sharing of electronic resources and project management. As it happens, one of our projects, the Scale Up project, is itself concerned with developing and using some of the more advanced aspects of these areas. So we really benefit from that. One of the great joys, however, of academic life is meeting and working with new people. Although the technology is critically important, meeting, working and playing together as real people in a real world, whether that is in the UK or in Saudi Arabia, is extremely rewarding.